The 23rd of July 2023 saw the Minster Bells playing their third friendly of the preseason and their first home game at the team's new home, the University of York Stadium. 322 sport reporter Haystacks was honestly over the moon at the team's move to the stadium, a home he sees as more befitting of their status and more importantly, their ambitions. The Minster Bells sometimes go overlooked at the club and almost seem to be treated as an afterthought. For example, there hasn't been up-to-date player profiles for the team on the club's official website for over a season now and doesn't look to be changing in time for the new season. If you give him a chance, Haystacks will happily chew your ear off about how hard that makes reporting on the team and how much of a slight that is to players who give their all for their club week in and week out. But we thought we'd spare you his waffling and press straight on. The Bells were debuting in their new home, and it promised to be a solid test against an impressive outfit from the division above. Looking around Haystacks was pleased. He estimated that there were over a hundred people in the stand for the game, a big improvement on the average attendance for home games at St. John. The first half proved to be disastrous for the Bells. After a positive start with a couple of forays towards the opposition goal, the Bells looked to be up for the battle. Around 15 minutes into the half though, the upper division team's pace began to tell, and our warrior women of York were struggling to find answers for it. Rather than be outpaced and leave Sidwell exposed with pacey players bearing down on goal, the Bells' backline began to drop a little deeper to protect goal. Unfortunately, this left the opposition with more time on the ball to find their range, and they soon did. Impressive midfield anchor, number 32 for the impressive Lancashire mob, buried the ball deep in the net from 25 yards out to begin a first-half demolition of the Bells' defense. Number 11 for the Ops then slammed the ball home five minutes later from nearly the same spot and would secure her brace only moments later as the Minster women seemed to crumble in a few moments of madness. Haystacks and Tommy were left speechless, and along with the rest of the crowd applauded the opposition's undeniably superb performance. Before the end of a torturous first half, the Bell defense would concede three more goals, and our brave warriors looked as miserable as the weather. The Bells never gave up trying. Millie Ash covered ground repeatedly matching the opposition's stride for stride but to no avail. Starved of opportunity and often a lone figure up front, Yorks, imposing number 20, gave everything to make something of the scraps she managed to get on, but found the opposition time and again as solid in defense as they were in attack. The first half ended with York City ladies trailing by six goals. The second half saw more determined and dogged Minster Bells return to action with laser focus on staying solid at the back. And they did. With great concentration and vigor, they matched their opposition and closed off the avenues they'd exploited throughout the first half with their pace. It wasn't exciting or flashy football in the second half, but our Warriors did what they needed to do. Like prize fighters suffering at distance, they closed the gap on their opponents and turned it into a more rugged affair. It wasn't pretty to watch, but it was effective, and the creativity of the Ops was limited at best under constant pressure. In the second half, the deadlock would remain throughout, but it was a solid, workmanlike performance from City to keep the opposition at bay. It would end in a six-goal loss. A six-goal loss always hurts, but there were many positives to take from the harsh result. Millie Ash worked endlessly throughout and by the end of her game must have done equal to a couple of marathons. Up front new striker number 20, who Haystacks is still struggling to find info for, held the ball up well at times and showed strength, determination, and a silky touch at times to turn players and get a shot away while outnumbered and harassed on all sides. Football is a game of variables. On another day, number 20 would have had a hat trick or at least a brace and would have deserved the goals for never giving up on a thankless afternoon. At the back, Emily Cattle and number 5 had really good games, bar a few critical mistakes that against lesser opposition perhaps 
wouldn't have been punished so harshly. Hey folks, hey uh, folks. take two, our other camera just died on us. Uh, so we've just left uh, York University Stadium, we've made our way back to uh, South Bank. Uh, oh, the rain pumpers, is yeah. still absolutely terrible. It's crazy weather. Uh, the game finished 6 0 to AFC Fylde. Uh, we're, like the Minster Bells, we gave a lot better of account of ourselves in the second half. Yeah, we did. I thought we matched them. In the first half, we seemed to sort of. We were a little bit taken aback by the early goals that they scored. Yeah, we were some screamers though, weren't they, bro? Uh, brilliant. They were. Yeah. Like, to tell, well, you can't take anything away from Fylde. Like, they were a really good team and I was saying to Tommy when we were leaving the game, yeah. if we do manage to get promoted this year and go up the division, it scares me a bit because yeah, were, the they golf were good. looks... They were good. Yeah man, the pace, the organisation, just they were a really yeah. good team. Uh, I thought we played out with our skin second half to keep them from scoring more goals yeah, yeah. and we came like back into the game. As I was going to say, in the first half, it felt like we resorted to type a little bit from last season. Mm. Like, because we'd fallen behind early, it's like we were trying to snatch your things yeah. to get back into the game, playing balls over the top, instead of playing, I don't know, that nicely placed ground football that yeah, we saw like, at the York last City week. Yesterday, you know? Yeah, yeah, well. um, yeah like yesterday, the men's yeah. team were playing at the minute. Yeah, yeah. But all in all, I'm not disheartened at all by that. Yeah. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. Mm. And I'm hoping that we see FC filed later on in the season in the cup and uh, return yeah. the favour for them. But like you were saying earlier, Nicky Brown, like for example, the captain, wasn't playing today. Oh yeah, Nicky Brown wasn't playing. Uh, I think Jess Holder was on the bench, but yeah. she didn't make an appearance. But there's a couple uh, of new faces we didn't we didn't recognise either, did we? Bro? Yeah. And at this point, the lads would go on to waffle for another ten minutes without really making point about much other than players' names and profiles on the York City site. Sorry, the report took a day or two longer than it should, folks. I'll go at 322 at the minute. Have a good week. Remember, keep it York City and keep it 322, and we'll see you at some point in the future. Have a good season, folks.